Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the newest releases from Katherine Pooler. She's got a new release out available today and it's called Kind of Batty. And it's a double release because there are two separate releases basically in it. The Kind of Wonderful release, which are the products that you'll see today and then the going baddie release which you will see from me tomorrow and all of this is part of the blog hop going on right now today is day one august 15th 2018 so make sure that you check that out it's linked in the description and make sure to comment on each blog post for your chance to win 25 dollars to the shop so right now I'm just showing a few examples of what I've done with the new stamp sets from the kind of wonderful portion of this release. As you can see, I've got some really beautiful layered roses and some layered leaves there. And here are the two sets. This is the rose garden set and it's got two different roses in the set and each rose has four layers. And then you've got some flowers there off to the right and some leaves also included in the set and this is the hello autumn set again with four layers and two leaves uh, or two main leaves and then we've got some smaller leaves and some acorns there at the bottom i thought that this would be a great way to go in and sort of show you how I like to set up for layering stamps. I know some people are a little intimidated by them and for good reason, they have to be lined up pretty perfectly. You have to pick different ink colors and the right ink colors to sort of like blend on top of each other or to stamp on top of each other to get that detail that the stamp is supposed to give. So I thought I would just go through and let you know how I like to layer stamps. I am in no means perfect at it, um, but I have a few things that I like to follow and I thought that I could share that with you today. So for this first rose that I'm going to stamp out, I'm going to be using It's a Girl, rose petals, peppermint scrub, and blackjack. And that is in succession of layer or in order of layer. So I'll be doing the first layer, it's a girl, the second layer, rose petals, the third layer, peppermint scrub, and the fourth and final layer, blackjack. Um, if you don't know much about layering stamps, you normally want to choose your lightest ink color for your base and then so on and so forth as your layers go, the ink should get a little bit darker and a little bit darker. And Catherine Puller inks are actually fantastic at this. She's done such a great job formulating the colors and sort of matching them in when she adds colors that you always have sort of like a successive color right after. Sometimes they just fit right in the middle and you're thinking, how did I ever live without this color before? But I like to sort of jump up quite a bit when I'm using the first layer that gives a lot of detail. So you'll see here in my second layer, it doesn't give that much more detail than the first layer, just a few divots here and there. But all in all, it's almost the same with there's not a lot of detail that goes into the second layer of stamping, which is usually true with most layered sets. You usually get the biggest detail on the third or fourth layer, and that's when you add all of the shading and the shadow. And so that's when I like to jump up a little bit as far as a successive color. I'd also like to mention here quickly, just while I have a moment, that it's pretty important to use a stamp positioning tool when layering stamps. It's important to get them in the right spot every time. So I'm using my mini Misty here, but really any stamp positioning tool will work. It just keeps everything cohesive. Also just a note to keep in mind, I've kept this in real time. I haven't sped it up at all so that you can see how long it really does take me to line up stamps. I think some people get intimidated because they think that they're taking too long as well when they've tried. I make at least three or four cards a day, many of them with layering stamps, and I still take quite a while to uh, layer them up just because I like them to fit nicely and look nice on there. 
So I'm jumping up quite a bit here to peppermint scrub from Rose Petals. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is the third layer stamp and it adds quite a bit of detail. And if you go in with a color that is too close to the layer that you did right before it, it's going to sort of blend together. This is really where you want to add the shadow and you want to see the highlights coming through. And to do that, you really want to jump up a bit. Now, I wouldn't say go to your darkest layer like blackjack, which is a very gray color, not red at all. I wouldn't say go there for your third layer only because you still want to keep the color in the color family. Right now on the fourth and final layer, I'm going to use blackjack. And that's because I want it to add the most amount of shadow and depth to the rose, which is I think the point of this fourth layer. It's not a very big stamp. As you can see, it does take me a little while to line up because there's not a lot of stamp space on it, meaning the spaces that are actually being stamped are quite small. So I have to really get in there and look for the spaces that it fits. Once you find it, it's a breeze, but it does take just a minute to sort of wiggle it around and find exactly where all of the lines line up. But I use my darkest color here, blackjack, and I think that that looks beautiful. I love the way that that turned out. You can see, as I said, all of the highlights and the shadows. And so that's usually how I pick out my color scheme. For my second rose, I'm using tiara, shea butter, orange twist, and mandarin spice. And I'll be using this second smaller rose. And I did speed this one up just a little bit because it's pretty repetitive to what I did before. I would just like to talk a little bit about how I position the stamps this time. And when I do so, I just make sure that I find a line that is pretty consistent in each stamp. So because the first layer doesn't have any middle details, I'll line up from then on out the very edge of the flower. And then from there on, I can find the middle or a little bit of an edge where I can just line up my next stamp. And then if I need to rotate it a bit to the left or to the right, I can do so and match up all of the other lines there. And this is what gra what's great about clear stamps is that you can do this and see all of the lines and just make these really beautiful designs. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. This is one of the cards that I created using this set and these color schemes. This card is part of my blog post for the hop today, which is linked in the description along with my blog, Instagram, Pinterest, and all of the supplies used here today. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you very soon. Thanks. Bye.